Good morning and welcome once again to another Sunday morning service of worship here at Spring Hill United Methodist Church in High Point, North Carolina. I am Pastor Ben Free and we welcome you this morning, all who are joining us uh, for this morning's worship on Sunday, November 15th, 2020. Uh, before we get started, uh, just a couple of announcements. Um, once again, uh, this past week, uh, we should have been gathering and getting in touch with uh, Miss Debbie Craven in order to uh, return those shoe boxes. Uh, I'm gonna send a message, uh, Miss Debbie, uh, I'll have mine, uh, apologize. But um, uh, please make sure to contact her if you haven't uh, returned those to her. And once again, uh, I believe the pecan sale is still going on, um, so please contact Miss Linda Frazier uh, if you're interested in pecans. Uh, we had some uh, phone line issues, uh, but the prayer line is still Fridays, so we apologize for that um, uh, with the, the, the phone lines. But uh, once again, Fridays, 530, we've changed it uh, for the prayer line. Um, uh, that is uh, all for me. So with that being said, uh, we will now call ourselves to worship this morning. Come, share the joy of the Lord. Delight in God's goodness. Praise God who gives each person a special gift to be nurtured and shared. Lord, we thank you for these gifts. Come, let us worship God who entrusts us with so much. Lord, make us worthy of your love and trust in us. Amen. Let us now open with our prayer. And let us pray that we may respond to God's trust in us. God, our kind and loving Father, you no longer call us servants, but friends. There is so much you have entrusted to us, even the future of your kingdom of justice and love. Give us the grace to work out with you the growth of mercy and goodness in this world, to be united with all Christians and with all who seek you with a sincere heart in bringing reconciliation and joy to everyone. Let us go together the way to you, our living and loving God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So this morning, brothers and sisters, I will lift up uh, several scripture lessons. Our first coming from the book of Judges, the book of Judges, chapter four, verses one through seven. Now hear the word of the Lord. The Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after Ehud died. So the Lord sold them into the hand of the king of King Jabin of Canaan who reigned in Hazor, the commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Herosheth ha Goim. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help, for he had 900 chariots of iron and had oppressed the Israelites cruelly 20 years. At that time, Deborah, a prophetess, wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites came up to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak, son of Abinoam, from Kadesh in Naphtali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, go take position at Mount Tabor, bringing 10,000 from the tribe of Naphtali 
and the tribe of Zebulun. I will draw out Sisera, the general of Jabin's army, to meet you by the Wadi Kishon with his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our next scripture lesson comes from Psalm 23. To you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God until he has mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Our soul has had more than its fill of the scorn of those who are at ease of the contempt of the proud. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We have uh, our epistle lesson coming from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. 1 Thessalonians chapter, f- chapter, uh, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, beginning at verse 1. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, Then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation." For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other as indeed you are doing. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, our gospel lesson this morning and our lesson for our message comes from the gospel of Matthew chapter 25 verses 14 through 30. Matthew chapter 25 verses 14 through 30. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, 
Well done, good and trusty, trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But the master replied, you wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. Verse 30. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So brothers and sisters, uh, we see we're at the parable where Christ once again is speaking to the kingdom of God. And now he's comparing it to uh, this master, this man who has these three slaves and gives them talents to care for. Uh, And we see two have been diligent, uh, but one has not. So in this parable, it brought me to uh, this thought, because a lot of times people uh, speak in reference of the scripture uh, and speaking of the judgment to come by that master coming back. But I saw uh, uh, another point in there or, or, or. Uh, some other things that stood out to me. So this morning, I, I want to, uh, I named this, this message, the ultimate gift, the ultimate gift. Um, and I know you're saying, well, well, why? I, I, you know, the story didn't end that well, but uh, I, I hope to convey that message in this morning's sermon. But before we get into this message of the ultimate gift, Uh, I ask that you pray with me a brief prayer before we get started. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, we just thank you. We pray that this time you will send your Holy Spirit to abide with us. Open our hearts, our minds, and ears to receive the message you would have us receive. So empty us out so that we may be filled with your presence this morning. And we just pray that uh, whatever is said will resonate, that we, it will enhance us in order to do the work you have called us to do. So we just pray and ask these things in the precious name of Jesus. Let us say together, amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. So, this ultimate gift, and, and I may be advertising something, but, you know, hopefully they'll send me a check for it. But I remember a time my, my brother actually made a cameo appearance and actually had one line in a movie that was shot in North Carolina called The Ultimate Gift. It was a movie with James Garner. I hope some of you may have seen it, uh, uh, so kind of know the the storyline, but for those that don't, uh, go out and 
rent it or on Netflix, whatever. I don't know where it is, but try to find it and watch it. Uh, it was a good story, and plus, it may help my brother out. I don't know if he gets residual or not. But, but uh, this ultimate gift was about this uh, rich man, entrepreneur, James Garner, who died and um, had a grandson who kind of was disconnected, um, but didn't think he was going to get the inheritance. But uh, they, they called him in, and uh, he was supposed to get... Uh, I think it was like a hundred million dollars, but it was under the condition he had to complete a certain amount of task. And of those tasks, it was doing good deeds and helping others and doing stuff so that it would teach him some lessons. Cause like I said, he was kind of disconnected. Uh, and then the story goes on from there. Um, and then I, I don't want to ruin it, but, uh, but, he performs this task and, and things happen, but eventually he receives uh, the initial uh, inheritance, but then was surprised by some other things. So uh, in thinking in this, I, I, I looked at this story and the first thing I thought about were these three slaves in this story and how they uh, come to this man, this, this master, their master. And the first thing uh, this master does is give them these talents, this, this money. Uh, and, 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 you know, it doesn't tell us what the expectation is, but uh, we see this act of giving each of them. And, and, and I take it they were probably responsible or had done good work or were, were, were humble or loyal. But we see this investment from this master with these three servants. And we know and anytime we invest in something, there comes a certain expectation. Even though the master didn't say it, we know from a human standpoint, whatever we invest in, we expect uh, some kind of return on it, whether it be uh, our time or family members or our children or friends, whatever have you. But whenever we invest something to put something in to help it flourish, we always expect a return. So we see this owner, this master investing in these slaves and giving them these gifts or talents in the story, and then entrusting them with it. You know, this is a very rich man, and as we saw in the story, one of the slaves felt he might have been a cruel or, or, or a harsh ruler. But yet, this man decides to gift and entrust. So we can think that these servants must have been faithful at work for him for the most part, but a key thing was, they didn't ask for anything in particular, yet this master still gave them these talents. They didn't ask, but yet they still received these talents. And I'll come back to that a little later, but think about that. They didn't even ask for it. The master just called them and, and, and then gifted them these talents without specifying a instruction, but yet they still received. So then we go and see in the story that the first two servants were very diligent. They went and exchanged and, and, and worked uh, to, to multiply that money. They took what they had and they didn't settle with it and say, I'm just going to hold it into the master, but they went and did something with it in order to enhance it. And, and, and make it more because they knew from somewhere within, if I do this, it would probably please my master. So in using the example of these first two, it just brought me to the fact of having these gifts. And some look at the man as Christ, but I look even bigger at just God gifting 
us. So we see these two servants and it brought me to the thought of how are we investing? How are we investing? Because we see the man, the master, who entrusted them with this wealth. And then we see the servants going to make more investments, doing more with it to imply. So then it brought me to how are we investing? The who we're investing, the what are we investing, and the why. Like, once again, whether it's our time or whatever it is we invest or if we invest in others, how are we investing all these things? How do we invest? It speaks to managing these gifts that have been given. So what are the things that we are using the gifts in order to make them grow? Are we investing them into our time with God, into our time with family, into our time with other believers? Are we investing them into people to help others grow and feel that love so that they may be enhanced? What are we investing ourselves in? Are we investing ourselves in those things that continue to draw us nearer to God? How are we investing? But then on the other side of that, we we come to the third servant or slave in the story. And we see where this Servant, instead of being like the first two and being diligent, decided to go and bury. As he said, I was so afraid, this is verse 25, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. And gave back to the master what he had started with. And this brought me to another thought I remember, and maybe you have as well. I remember in speaking, because it's always interesting that this, this, this money is described with the word talent. And we know how we define talent uh, as, a, as a gift from God, that something that uh, helps you be creative or, or bring something to present to people to bring others joy. But we know this talent, and I remember... Uh, That lesson that everybody would always say, you might have heard this, if you don't use it, then you will lose it. If you don't use it, then you will lose it. I I often remember certain things I may have been good at and people have always encouraged me to share and I've been kind of shy like, no, no, I just do that kind of hobby. But I didn't realize in those times that it was this gift this talent that made others happy, that may have helped others through something. But I always heard that warning of, if you don't use it, you will lose it, or God will take it away. We know that even checks and gift cards have limited time, that if you don't cash it or use this by a certain date, it will be invalid or taken away. And then we see what comes in the uh, 29th verse where it reminds us that uh, even from those who have nothing, but even what they have will be taken away. So it speaks to this use and being diligent in what you have been gifted. Even if you didn't ask for it, you still must be diligent in it. And it brings me to this point to remind us that everyone has a gift, despite how we 
may view it. As I said, I was one that was shy and, and, and always downplayed certain gifts. And we, sometimes we view certain things that we're able to do or certain talents. And we, 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 you know, there's one thing to be humble, but then there's another to not recognize things that may help someone. So everyone has been gifted. Whether it's many or few, large or small, but it is your gift that you have been gifted. And someone needs to be blessed by that gift, that talent that you possess. Because ultimately, as we see in the examples of those first two slaves, it will please the master. And our master being God. So we must take those gifts, those talents, and continue to use them and share them so that we continue to please our master. One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible speaks to this. It comes from 1 Peter chapter 4. Verse 10, 1 Peter chapter 4, for chapter 4, verse 10 reads, Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. It is because of God's grace that we are gifted, but we are also called to share these gifts, not to bury them out of fear, not to bury them for the lack of desire, but to share them so that we continue to honor and make the master God happy. So when we invest that gift, those talents, we invest it as a gift in order to glorify God while being a blessing to others. So continue to understand that that investment is always to glorify God. Which brings me to this last thought, this thought of how God will always increase as long as we are faithful stewards. God always promises to increase. So that leads us to truly understanding what has been gifted to us, which brings me back to that earlier point where I emphasize how these servants of this master, didn't even ask for anything, but yet they received these gifts. And once again, that speaks to the grace of God, that unwarranted grace, as John Wesley called it, that prevenient, prevenient grace, that grace we receive not for anything we have done, but because God loves us, God's creation. So we have been gifted, even though we haven't asked or done anything for it. We have been gifted. So now it moves us to how we share it with the world. How do we share our gift with the world? And just as we look in everyday life with the stock market, uh, uh, the more you invest, the more you gain. The more you put in, the more you bring out. The same with God. The more we invest in witnessing and service and being loving to others, the more we will be increased by God. Verse 29 reminds us, for all those who have, more will be given and they will have an abundance. This is the promise of God as told to us through this parable by Jesus Christ. 
The investment is one of pleasing God, remaining faithful to that first commandment that Christ gave us, loving God with all our heart, our soul, and mind. So in staying true and faithful to that, we are investing in that glorification of God, that obedience. So when we think to the gifts that we've been given, those talents, it brings us to remembering that ultimate gift, recognizing the one who brought us this light, who brought us this life, the ultimate gift of Christ, who came in the human form just as we are in order to show us what we were in the beginning of creation and what we can still return to be. And that is in full union with God. That is what we invest our time, our service, our love into returning to that full union with God. That is what the greatest gain we ought to receive from our investments in the glory of God, striving towards that union with God through Christ by that Holy Spirit. So brothers and sisters, in order to really appreciate that ultimate gift, that witness to Christ and that gospel, we have to be wise in how we invest in it with our service, our love, our time, our discipline, our obedience. And in being wise in our investment that demonstrates that we know what the true reward is. And that is redemption and salvation by the grace and will of God through Jesus Christ. I give you this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, uh, before we depart, I'm going to ask one more time that we go to God for a brief moment of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are truly thankful for your grace. Your grace that has been given. That we may have gifts to share with the world. We just pray your continued providence over our lives. We just pray your purpose for our lives that we may fulfill it and totally be humbled and obedient so that we can invest those gifts, those talents in order to enhance your kingdom, your kingdom that is to come. So we just thank you. We give you all the play, praise, honor, and glory. And we know that everything we do should always bring you glory. And we ask all these gifts, talents, in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. Let us all say together, amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. So, brothers and sisters, please receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace and enjoy your Sunday. Thank you.